Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by for another bow review. After the last one and shooting a million arrows a thousand times each, <laughs> I've changed the way that I'm going to be doing these reviews. I want to bring you quality information that you can use, um, but also be able to do it in a reasonable amount of time. So going forward, what we're going to do with the bow reviews, the first step is going to be our foot per second readings. I'm not going to make you guys watch that like I have in previous videos. I'm not even going to speed it up because ultimately it takes a really long time and you guys are just going to fast forward through that and try and find the next good bit of information. So I won't put you through that, but what I am going to do is shoot each bow at 60 pounds and then again at 70 pounds uh, with six different arrow weights ranging from 366 grains to four to 587 grains. Um, the draw lengths will be from approximately 27 to 28 to 29 and then 30 inches, um, possibly up to 31 inches, depending on the bow and how it fits. And of course, it's uh, overall specs and capabilities. So after we collect all that data, I'll, I'll put it in the charts and we'll go over it together. And then the next step will be shooting with the Mantis X8. So the Mantis X8 offers a stability score. That's what we're going to focus on, but I'll also show you what the screen looked like at each shot so that you can see how the bow responds um, without any major stabilization on it. For that test itself, I will be taking five shots with a 15 second full draw hold and aim. I'll aim for that entire 15 seconds and then release. And we'll, we'll check that data out. And then I'll be doing a sixth shot with a one minute hold and then aim and release. That aim will probably be pretty short, but I'll be able to give you how it felt to me. Uh, how easy it was to hold for that length of time, of course. Um, and if I, well, we'll be able to see the data if I hit target or not. But. And then uh, finally, we'll do a draw and a letdown test on film, just so you guys can see uh, how it looks. And I'll give you my thoughts as I'm going through that process. So stay tuned. We've got one for you coming right up. All right, guys. The Elite Basin. It's a beautiful entry level bow. Um, and what I mean by entry level is it's adjustable from 16 inch draw up to a 30 inch draw length with a weight range of 20 to 70 pounds. So truly a beginner archer can buy this, can grow into it and it can adjust up to fit any, any archer. Um, of course, that's within 30 inches of draw length, but that's a, a, a wide range there with the majority of people being able to shoot this bow, bow and enjoy it. I think it's absolutely worth a look. And uh, we'll cover some of the details now. All right, so here's the speed results on the Elite Basin. See from 60 pounds up from 27 inch up to 30 inch. And then because of the style of the bow and its wide adjustability, you'll notice that I was only able to obtain 66.5 pounds at 27 inch draw, um, shy of twisting up cables, and uh, the 68.5 pound at 28 inch draw. Then from 29 and 30, I could, I could get to 70 pounds. Um, I think my peak was about 72 pounds. So. Keep that in mind, 72 pounds at 30 inches. Uh, definitely keep that in mind when you're thinking about purchasing. Um, you might not be able to get the actual draw length, uh, draw weight at your draw length as advertised. Kind of one of the downfalls of these widely adjustable bows. But nonetheless, here's the data for you. Um, so you can see, you know what, I'm just going to pop into this so you can have a look and screenshot it if you so choose. So there's all the data <clears throat> that was collected. Again, at 30 inches, my um, lighter arrows aren't long enough. Maybe that'll change one day, I'm not sure. But, so there's the information for you there. 
a couple of interesting things. I'm sure you'll pick some more out as you look over it, but the heavier arrows seem to respond fairly similar across the board to the to the lighter ones. So there you have it. There's the Elite Basin uh, foot per second rating. And now we'll just do a quick brief on the Mantis X8, which you'll see next in greater detail. But again, this was done at 29 inch draw, 70 pound, and then the 15 second minimum aim before I shot uh, for the first five here. Pretty good scores. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially given the, the price point of the bow. It's definitely 90% plus, so holds good, aims good. You can get a little bit fatigued if you hold it for a long time, but even after holding it for a minute and shooting, I was able to maintain composure at the shot, so that's nice. And then our average of five shots, 92.74 will be our official Mantis X8 stability score. And then you'll see later on our letdown score as well was a 10 out of 10 for this bow. So that's the data. Let me know if you want to see anything else. All right, guys, so we can see here, just going into the aiming section here. Took a second to get on target. And then it's holding pretty steady here. It's really bouncing around that X. Didn't feel any discomfort or anything like that holding for this length of time. It was really... Um, quite easy but again you did have to really pay attention um to the creep so there we saw it hit right behind the axe with a stability score of 93.7 here's the next one again drawing back getting in getting settled on the target not sure what's going on there Really not sure why I'm over there. It's holding steady over there, though. I'll tell you that much. Then uh, after counting, I start moving in onto my X, and there she goes. Pretty much every bow I've shot has a tendency to shoot off to the left like that, so. We'll go to the third shot. This one didn't record my pulling back for some reason. I took too long. Wasn't happy. Nonetheless, we got a stability score. And you can see just where that X hits behind. There's the shot there. Commanded my shot a little bit, it looks like. Fourth shot. A little worse of a stability score here. You can see where I released and where my arrow would have left the bow. Seemed like I was fatigued that time, but uh, nonetheless, you see the stability score there. That's all bouncing around in there. We'll go to number five, which looks pretty close to number four. A little better stability score this round, though.
Again, not really sure why I'm down there like that. You'll notice this bow holds up and down really nicely. No sidebar or anything like that. Coming into my shot. Don't really know why that occurred the way that it did. As we get more data from more bows, we'll begin to see. But uh, here's the long one. This is after holding for one minute. Not aiming, just holding. And then the last little bit of it will actually be aiming. And then the release. So now I start aiming. Obviously fatigued, and then it goes goes off but every time to the left after after my shot so it's pretty interesting i know a lot of people run a, a sidebar there and i'm not on this bow i would be curious to see how majority drop their bow after the shot anyways so there you have it there's the mantis x8 data with our stability scores. All right, so for the draw test, we will begin. Now this bow again is set at 29 inch and 70 pounds. I'll do a nice slow draw. It's fairly stiff pretty early, but it just maintains that the whole way through. There's no surprises in it. It's really comfortable to get in the back wall. The big thing with that, the letdown on it is really, really easy. You, you know it's going down. The back wall does take a little more focus. It does have a tendency to want to take off on you a little bit. Okay. It'll just, it'll go for sure. So it's nice in a hunting scenario because if you need to let down, you can do so very controlled. But also when you're drawing, you can go so slow and just keep it comfortable. So you're not making any super quick movements, not overcoming a, a, a hump in the back wall. It's just really, really smooth. And again, this is at 70 pounds and 29 inches. So I'm just gonna take the shot. See it, how it crept on me a little bit there? There it is. Stays stable without any real stabilizers on it. I'm sure this bow would feel great once you get it all tuned in to the way you like it. Yeah. So would I recommend it? Absolutely. I mean, it's a beautiful looking bow. It shoots great. It really does hold great. You guys saw the scores, you saw the speeds. For a 315 foot per second IBO bow, this thing is great. Hey guys, so if you're in the market for an Elite Basin and you're in Canada, please consider checking out my website. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Or if you're in the United States or anywhere else, as far as I know, uh, be sure to check out your local Elite dealer. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you on the next one.